One very clear thing is that word is not a word. And I would like to, you know, share a small uh, a Zen koan, Zen saying, which I recently found in Thich Nhat Hanh's work also, that it's about finger pointing to the moon. And word is a finger that is pointing to the world. But somehow we get caught in the word, in the finger and stays there. So this is, this is basically the crisis of modern education. You know, and there are distinctly two different phases to this research. One was based on like all of us, most people are actually trying to improve education. And, and that is based on the question, how to teach children. Second phase, phase began when I began to live with indigenous communities, non-literate communities, where I found there was no teaching at all. So I call this, I, the second phase is how children learn. So actually this question, you see these two questions make crucial differences. When you ask the question, how to teach, your whole approach will be one thing. But when you begin to understand that children learn and then you begin to, you know, want to know how do they learn and then you approach them very, very differently. So this is what for me to, I think it was in 1991 that I stayed in a small village in Orissa with the Potter's community where hardly anybody knew how to read and write. Uh, of course, children had just started going to school, uh, but I found that children, there was no teaching of pottery at all and children were learning on their own. And that I, that was a fantastic, you know, uh, thing to observe. And I found that slowly, 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 I found that even everything about pottery was learned by children on their own. And by the time they reach around 10, 12 years, they become experts. They, they even make small chulas kiln and do their own firing. And I, much later, I also, uh, you know, in 2010, 12, I also began to work in a small school called Sadhana Village School in Pune, uh, where we did a fantastic experiment. We called it reimagining schools. Uh, and there, there was absolutely no teaching at all. And what we did, the whole group, what we did was we created an environment for children to do whatever they wanted. And uh, in, in the three years, what we did was to really observe, document, learn what children were doing. So it is basically from all this, uh, you know, explorations that one got an idea that what really are children learning and how do they learn and how teaching is detrimental to this whole process actually. So teaching destroys learning, teaching denies children uh, to unfold their inherent qualities. That's the thing. So let's take teaching paradigm. So what are the givens there? There is one who knows, one who doesn't know, there is ready-made knowledge and knowledge can be taken out of context, which can be, you know, that's the understanding of that. It can be codified in language or other means into a product, which can be transferred. And then what are the characteristics? It's a closed system. Knowledge is known. It's rigid. There's no question of like the sky is blue. You know, I hope you remember that sky is blue. It's rigid. It brings in certainty. And of course, the structure is hierarchical. It's top down. The teacher who knows is giving to the stack, you know. So that the very organization of the space is hierarchical, you know. Uh, curriculum can be understood in two, three ways. One is that what is the hidden curriculum of a situation? You know, of course, the curriculum that as we understand is what they teach you. But what are the hidden curriculums? So all this actually belongs to the hidden curriculum. What it actually does to you in the, in the whole system, how it rewires you. And, and, and who is the teacher? One who knows his authority and interest is of no consequence, you know, uh, but he likes to teach. That's the thing. Very rarely you find somebody with learning quality and the taught who doesn't know. And the role is the role is to accept what is being taught. Otherwise, he'll be beaten up or he'll be given, you know, like the characteristic is brought in. Again, interest is of no consequence because quite often, uh, you know, like one friend was telling me that the difference between a good student and a bad student is that good bad student forget after the exam. I mean, sorry, good student forget after the exam, bad student forget before the exam. That's the, you know, the basic difference because 
I'm sure most of us must have forgotten most things that we have, you know, supposedly learned. Yeah? So this is the, uh, uh, you know, tragedy of our system. And of course, you, if you look at the content, it is ready-made, non-contextual, it is homogeneous because all over India, it's the same kind of thing that will be taught. So even for somebody in Ladakh, they would be taught, uh, you know, Kashmir is not to the north of Ladakh. So that's the kind of, uh, you know, uh, homogeneous text that we have created. And, and, and this knowledge is transferred to the mind. Body has no access because there is no experience that is being, uh, you know, provided in, in the context of schools, you know. And another assumption is that its knowledge can be stored and recalled. And then, so, and then what the school does? School is actually more damaging because the, 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 you know, the child is born learning. You know, it, it, existentially, mm -hmm. that is how we are made. To that child, you are telling, no, go to that school, that is where you will get knowledge. You know, and there is one teacher who will give you, you know, knowledge. So, so what is the message that the child is getting that his own process is not important he is not a creator somebody will give him and he also then disconnects with the immediate context and the traditional cultural knowledge that that had been there for thousands of years and you know one thing that is to be understood is that uh, this child is actually in one sense as old as life that whole you know so even that carries something within its being so the, so this is actually a deeper crisis at a more subconscious level so the institutionalization of knowledge and mechanization of learning process this is what is actually killing the organic life sustaining knowledge creation that happens in society naturally because this knowledge is created by all living beings and and the healthy society can always only survive when it is creating knowledge See now, actually, this COVID is a good good time to reflect on these things. You know, a place like Kerala, uh, where there is hardly any agricultural production, we have to totally depend on our neighboring states for most things. You know? Very few production of rice, vegetables come from Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. You know? So. Oh, it's, it's very, and not only that, all these places had fantastic ways of doing all this farming. And every place had its own, uh, you know, uh, farming techniques, its own seeds, everything actually. Everything is now kind of homogenized. So what you actually learn in the classroom is what, uh, you know, which I also mentioned in the last uh, presentation, that actually what you teach, uh, what you learn is how to teach. Because what you experience in the classroom is the teacher teaching. See, actually what really happens in the classroom is that your system gets divided. Your mind will start listening to the teacher. Because that is what you need, you need to remember. Otherwise they will either for getting good marks or for the fear of getting beaten up. So your mind is actually then preoccupied with that. But what is your body doing? Body, body is just rotting away. Body is just idle, sitting, steady. That's it. Body is asleep in one sense, immovable. But the body is also absorbing. The emotions are absorbing. There is another learning that is happening within that space. Again, which is the, uh, you know, the unsaid curriculum, which is the fear, which is the authority. You know, and then more than all this, what education does is to make you into believer of science, believer of knowledge, because there is not one thing that you have verified in your experience. It has all been told to you and you just have to believe. So actually the superstition, it's only the content that has shifted earlier. I mean, of course, we used to say that the people are superstitious, but what are we? We just shifted. Uh, the content into science that's all you know and of course you can see other things that are happening superiority complex competitive mind dependence on methods so there are you know at a very fundamental level several damages that schooling does 
And uh, this is what I told us cognitive dissonance, which means that the body is learning something and mind is learning something. So the fragmentation of body and mind is basically because of, of an experience that is happening where the only mind is, mind is doing one thing and the body is doing something else. They are not in sync. They are not doing the things together. That's the thing. Another major thing is what is called as ontological reversal, which means that knowledge precedes knowing or the product precedes process, which, which is actually impossible. There is no way. So this is what we are doing. So we are reversing a certain system completely and, and, and creating a make belief that we are, you know, we are, we are educated, you know. And, and in fact, what we do with reasoning is that I say that reasoning short circuits comprehension. What are we doing? Whatever is being told to us, of course, we agree with it. And through reasoning, we, we kind of agree with whatever they have told and just, you know, put it in our head. So reasoning basically is used as a concluding thing. It, it doesn't open up. So the overuse of reason, you know, what is actually give, doing to you is to make you closed because it is ultimately a, a, a concluding tool. It's not an opening tool, you know. So, well, this is what, this is what happens to the child. You know, he, he look at the uh, uh, teacher-like body that, that, that she has acquired. So what it is that the act of teaching often belittles the person who is taught. It can't happen otherwise. It can't happen otherwise. So within the Western paradigm, you will find that because they are trapped in that paradigm of teaching, you will find that motivation is a problem. So they will find different, different ways to how to motivate the child. And they will say that you need curiosity. But how come curiosity is dead? Why do you have to mention curiosity? Now, how did we kill it? And then they've come up with this idea of learning styles. In fact, there are no learning styles. This is again a modern myth. It's like telling there are digestion styles, different ways in which we digest food. Yeah. If that is, doesn't exist, then comprehension is also one way only. There are no different ways of learning. Senses are given to you to function in one way. Eyes are for seeing, ears are for hearing, you know, so that it's actually the senses that gives all the input that is required. And it is defined biologically. It's not your whim. You know, it's not your wish that you want to, you know, uh, you know, dance with apple to understand. Not possible. You have to eat it. You have to see it. You know, so these are all, uh, see, these myths are happening because you're already in a very wrong paradigm. You're already assuming teaching is required. You already assume that you have knowledge. If you don't give up these two, then naturally what you will, you will do is to take these as your framework and then you do all kinds of experiments within that framework, you know, so, and then you will re, uh, you know, recreate meanings for things. For example, creativity. Creativity is now something that, that happens in the end, you know, now it's after schooling, we are telling creativity is gone. But actually, if you look at the natural learning process, creativity is a starting point. Without creativity, there is no learning at all. Creativity basically means that you're engaging with the unknown, that response will be creative. That is what creativity is. And this is what a crawling child is doing. This is what a child who is climbing up the, uh, you know, the sofa is doing. This is how a child climbs up the table and do. I'm sure parents are not showing them how to climb on the table, no? Which actually means that the child is already embedded with this ability to be creative. Creative means to respond to the unknown. That's a very simple thing. Responding to the unknown, ability to respond to the unknown is what creativity is all about. So what, what, uh, what teaching does to senses is very important because teaching can only be done to the mind. So naturally senses are discarded in the act. And, and, and this actually creates a fundamental damage and split to us, to our being. In fact, when you start teaching children words, 
or the teaching that you are doing is directly going to the mind whereas when the child is creating the meaning by linking the word the sound you provide and the context in which he lives he connects that then he is integrating the word and the world the experience he is having and naming of that the child is doing when the child is doing it the child is in control of these two things he knows that it is what is experience that we are talking about the reason why children are able to learn many many languages for example children in bangalore slum are able to they can handle four languages by the time they reach 3 4 years i'm sure many of your own children would be doing that how are they able to do it are you teaching every word which actually means that children already have tremendous capacity and this is what actually we need to understand but we can only understand this provided we understand how this whole teaching paradigm has because otherwise we won't be able to see through at all we are always looking through the framework that teaching and schools have created to look at the child in order to understand the child we have to actually start you know rewiring our systems and and remove the uh, illusions and the masks that uh, the windows that this paradigm has created to look through unless we do that we won't be able to really see what the child is doing that is why